the first question that is burning in my mind is how in the heck did you get from being an optometrist to being the author of so many interesting books about life, consciousness, philosophy, whatever we want to call this, this mess we're in? Well, you know, in life there are experiences that are called life changers. You have epiphanies, you have revelations, something happens that doesn't at all fit into anything that you've seen or you've learned that profoundly impacts you. One of the one of those things happened to me uh, when I was in practice in 1976. Well, initially in 1971, when I was still in the midst of my optometric training, um, I was having great difficulties, which I'd had in school throughout my life. Reading was really difficult. I'd start reading and I'd fall asleep. and So getting through school was very difficult for me. And even though I tried very hard, I thought something was wrong with me. Because I, I didn't read. Uh, I, I just didn't like to read. What, was so, there anything wrong with you? Uh, I had excellent eyesight, but uh, I didn't find out what was going on with me until the end of my second year of optometry school where I thought they were going to ask me to leave because I just barely had a passing mark. And before you go into the third year at this particular optometric college, they ask you to go down to the clinic and have one of the senior doctors examine you because they had to have at least 150 patients prior to graduation. So I went down for an exam and the guy said, oh, you need another pair of glasses, which I, you know, I got every six months like most people who wear glasses. Mm -hmm. But he also said to me, you know, you're having some problems doing, using your eyes together. No one had ever shared that with me. And he said, it might be affecting your reading comfort. So he gave me a little tool, a vision training product, some product at the time I thought to exercise my eyes. I was so busy working and trying to get through school that I never used it. I just put it in the corner of my room. A couple months later, I was sitting in bed reading an assignment, and what always happens happened. I fell asleep. And when my eyes opened, the very first thing that caught my eye was that device at the opposite end of the room. I don't know why, but something moved me to pick it up. I opened it up, and I did just one five-minute exercise on it. And after that five-minute exercise, I read for an hour, nonstop, with the most perfect attention and comprehension I had ever experienced in my whole life. It was such a profound experience that I started crying because I really thought I was stupid. I thought something was wrong with me. I did these little 10-minute exercises each day for about two months, and then I made Dean's List every quarter until I graduated for the next two years. That was an incredible life changer and led me to realize there's a difference between eyesight, the ability to see something, to read an eye chart, and the ability to utilize your vision for the sake of being able to perform at a high level, whether it be at sports or learning or attention or something else like that. Did you have a question? Well, yeah, so that you, what you're saying is there's a difference between the hardware and the software is how I'm hearing that. Well, there's a difference between the static ability to see a letter on an eye chart or the static ability to see a, a, a pitcher pitching a ball to you at 90 miles an hour and the ability to determine exactly where the ball is, when it's going to arrive here, and then to swing the bat at the exact instant so that the bat hits the ball perfectly and goes a long distance. One is eyesight and one is vision. One is more static, even though there's a dynamic component, and one of them, see, one has to do with what you see, and the other one has to do with what you do with what you see. 
Right. It has right. to do with your response to the situation. And since 90% of what we take in as humans is via the eyes, the eyes' ability to aim, track, focus, and team literally affect everything you do because, you see, you and I are having this interview. How do you know I'm paying attention? <laughs> well, how do you I'm watching know? Your, I'm watching your eyes. That's right, because I'm looking at you. Exactly. So when I'm looking at you, the looking, which is the convergence, the focusing, the aiming of the eyes, which occurs naturally, is what allows us to attend. What does that mean? The moment the eyes converge, a switch goes off in the brain that causes the noises of the outside world to dissipate and to be able to tune in to you and for you to tune in to me. And so the ability to aim the eyes is synonymous with presence. And presence is the foundation of being able to effortlessly attend to that aspect of life that is grabbing my attention, whether it is a baseball, a word on the page, or someone on the street. So that's the first component. Let me just okay. finish this and then we'll get to that. When the eyes aim, they simultaneously focus. Now, when we think of focus, we think of some sort of an optical instrument where we're making things clearer. But when the eyes focus, it's synonymous with clarity. What is clarity? Clarity is when somebody says, I see. They don't mean, I see the eye chart. They mean, I understand. So clarity is synonymous with knowing. There's a sense of knowing that comes into play as soon as that occurs. Because everything in life is always in movement, the eyes never stop moving. They're continually being guided by the movement of light. And we have two eyes. Each one provides a slightly different perspective. When the two eyes braid together into oneness, all of a sudden you have a new perspective with depth. We call that depth stereo, stereopsis, or depth perception, or three-dimensionality. But it's more than that. It's not just optical depth perception. It's the ability to see deeply into things. That's why Jonathan Swift said real vision is the ability to see the invisible. What he was talking about is that at a certain level of development, the vision system actually allows us to access that which is, is not immediately perceptible. And so vision is a view, beautiful metaphor for all the aspects of consciousness. Presence, attentiveness, clarity, knowing, uh, oneness, all of that. So they're inseparable and What's magnificent about it is that the eyes are literally in a continual relationship with light. And most people, when they think of light, they think of, I put on the light bulb. Or I look at the sun and I see the light. But you can't see light. Light is totally invisible. It is not perceptible through the normal means, what we experience is brightness. So there's something very magical hmm. about this thing called light, which we say enters the eye, focuses, and allows us to see. The, the thing that's really interesting to share with you is that we're led to believe that we are looking for the light that we are looking for things in the world. We want to make things happen. And we look for them and we make them happen. But that isn't at all the way things occur. The reason we say it caught my eye is because the light 
is actually looking for the eye. And in the moment it grabs the attention of the eye, the eye involuntarily moves towards that light. The body reorients itself, and that puts us on the next track of our journey in life. Hmm. There's something very profound about that. Mm -hmm. It means there's an aspect of life that is guiding our movement. And so then you have to take a look at the intelligence of life in a very different way because when we look at Mother Nature that provides everything from food and light and clean air and all these things, there's something behind all this that is really at the profoundness of life itself. And once we begin to, to see that, our life is changed very, very dramatically.